Chapter 681, Black Market, 3. What is that? The little white tiger suddenly stopped walking. It saw from afar several shabbily dressed girls shivering in fear as they stood on the wooden stage. Surrounding the stage were numerous wooden cages that were as tall as a person, and many dejected males and females were locked in it. Yi King Tung stopped in her tracks slowly and looked in the direction that the little white tiger was looking at. When she saw the young girls whose limbs were chained, her brows furrowed automatically. The biggest difference between the underground black market and other places was the trafficking of slaves. Slave trafficking was forbidden in both Formidable Heavens Dynasty and Nine Knights Dynasty, though such prohibition was merely on the surface. In Nine Knights Dynasty's underground black market, slave trafficking was still quietly carried out. Years ago, slave trafficking was completely prohibited in the Nine Knights Dynasty. However, Ever since the previous emperor was down with illness and the young emperor succeeded the position, this forbidden transaction started again. Although the masses never mentioned it, everyone knew that the slave trafficking in the Nine Knights dynasty was controlled by the premier Kin Long in reality. Currently, Kin Long presided over political affairs, and the emperor was young and ignorant. Thus, no one could stop the trafficking of slaves. With Kin Long as their backer, the slave owners were emboldened and the transaction of slaves was all the more carried out in the open. There were a few muscular men who each held a barbed leather whip standing on both sides of the stage with fierce and evil expressions. Their bulky bodies were a stark in contrast from those shabby young ladies. Despair and horror were wretched on the faces of those young ladies. They could only stick to each other while trembling. Yet their fear was an admiration pleasure of the buyers who were below the wooden stage. The slave masters waved the leather whip every now and then, making a loud sound. Frightened, those young ladies were shocked to an ash-white shade as they shrieked and whimpered softly. However, their despair and horror attracted the laughter of the onlookers. These are the new arrivals just sent a few days ago. I promise that you all will not be disappointed. A big and fleshy male who stood on the wooden stage laughed as he looked down at the buyers below. As he spoke, he reached out and pulled a young girl over, completely ignoring her struggle and pleas. He ripped her tattered clothes apart, crushing her dignity, and exposed her before everyone. Tsitsi, you humans actually have such a special hobby. The little white tiger understood what was happening already. Those girls and the people in the cage were being sold as a commodity by those fellows who were also humans. Yi Kington's face darkened. In her previous life, when she came to the black market, she was mostly led by her other martial brothers, and they intentionally avoided the areas with slave trafficking. This was the first time Yi Kington witnessed the scene of a slave trafficking. As the onlookers laughed. The girl who was dragged out cried at the top of her lungs. However, her tears did not bring any compassion and instead excited the buyers. Right at that instant, a male in luxurious clothes arrived in the crowd with a few followers. While that man was dressed gorgeously, his face was exceptionally hideous, and his twisted features seemed to have been burned before. Chapter 682, Skin, 1. Once the slave master on the wooden stage saw that male, he immediately rushed up eagerly. Young Sir Shangguan, what brings you here today? When the group of buyers noticed that male, they instinctively made way. The male before them was called Shangguan Rui. His father was the Nine Knights Dynasty's Dragon Tiger General and had a large number of troops under him. He was one of Kin Long's trusted subordinates and was regarded highly by Kin Long. Shangguan Rui was the only son of the Dragon Tiger General. Although he had an honorable identity, he was born with many flaws. Not only was his appearance extremely hideous, but he also had a nauseating smell on his body since birth. Because of his flaws and the fact that his father was a general who controlled a massive amount of troops, he could do anything he wanted in the entire Nine Knights dynasty, and even normal influential ministers had to give in to him. Shangguan Rui glanced at the slave master and then at the girls on the wooden stage who were barely clothed. An evil glint shone in his uneven eyes. I heard that there are quite a few new arrivals today. I'm here to take a look. Yes, yes, yes. They all came not long ago and are all inexperienced. Do take a look, young Sir Shangguan. 
The slave master responded obsequiously with an arched back as he rubbed his hands. Shang Wen Rui nodded slightly and walked up to the wooden stage with his guards. He stood before those trembling girls frivolously and looked at those terrified girls as though he was scanning through livestock. When he saw the girl whose clothes was torn by the slave master previously, his brows were raised slightly. He stretched a hand out and grabbed on the girl's hair as she was looking down forcing her to look up. It was a fair and exquisite face. Her pretty facial features were filled with fear and despair. Large teardrops slipped out from the corner of her eyes as she trembled in fear. Her looks are not bad. Shang Wen Rui took a glance of that girl and subsequently nodded at the slave master. The slave master immediately followed him and laughed. We brought this girl from the eastern region. She is quite young. Just fifteen. Please, let me go. I beg you the girl whose hair was tugged on by Shang Wen Rui trembled in fear. Her tears were like jewels from a broken pearl necklace that dripped down continuously. This beauty is really good looking when she cries. Shang Wen Rui narrowed his eyes. As he looked at her terrified behavior, his twisted lips suddenly curled up, and he pulled the girl closer. Don't be afraid, I will not harm you. Don't worry. Am I not here to save you now? Shang Wen Rui's voice was extremely soft, but there was something blood girdling in his tone. On top of his unusually ugly face, such close distance caused the girl to be even more frightened. Yet in this despair, the girl seemed to have a straw to clutch at when she heard Shang Wen Rui looked at him imploringly with eyes wide open. Will will you really save me? Of course. You're so good looking. How can I bear for you to suffer here? Shang Wen Rui's smile was increasingly sinister. You just need to listen obediently, and I will not harm you, understand? The girl nodded staggeringly. However, just as she thought she seemed to have found a straw to clutch at, a cold glint suddenly flashed across Shang Wen Rui's eyes. He raised his hand and threw that girl to his followers. Skin her. Chapter 683, Skin, 2. What? The girl did not dare to believe what she just heard as she landed in the hands of those followers. Those followers received the orders immediately and held the girl. The girl simply had no time to react. All she saw was that a man had already walked to her with a flaying knife in his hands. The sharp blade slit her soft skin open, and blinding red blood spouted out immediately. Ah, how do you do things? Shang Wen Rui frowned suddenly. She is too noisy. Pluck her tongue out first. Yes. A horrifying wail rang throughout the black market loudly. A bloody tongue was plucked out from the girl's mouth. A raspy and distorted scream was forced out from her lungs, but the people who grabbed her did not release their grip at all. The flaying knife touched the girl's skin, slowly skinning the warm human skin off from her body. In just the blink of an eye, the girl who initially had a gentle and beautiful appearance had turned into a skinless bloody human, while the beautiful skin was handed directly to Shang Wen Rui. As Shang Wen Rui looked at the beautiful skin that was dripping with blood and still had a lingering warmth, a twisted smile immediately emerged on his hideous face. Satisfied with the outcome, he gently rubbed it against his cheeks to feel the lingering warmth. An intoxicated expression filled his face. Indeed, a girl's skin is still the smoothest and most tender. Keep it and bring it back. After processing it, place it in my beauty pavilion. Shang Wen Rui took a deep breath of the bloody smell and subsequently threw the beautiful skin to his subordinates. The intense smell of blood filled the surroundings. The buyers who were initially interested in buying female slaves were horrified by Shang Wen Rui's violent methods. When they saw the skinless girl who collapsed on the ground, their hearts could not stop quivering. Shang Wen Rui was born ugly. He had a strange smell and a few defects on his body. In addition, his father pampered him a lot. Thus, his personality was exceptionally twisted and violent. Shang Wen Rui's greatest hobby was to collect the skin of the beauties in the world. Moreover, it was by skinning the beauties alive, and the skin would be stored after processing it. He even specially built a beauty pavilion in his residence which was used just to store his collections. The regulars in the black market were already no stranger to this. If those girls who were waiting to be sold were in despair and fear previously, when they saw their previous companion being skinned alive, only an insane fear remained in their hearts. They would at most be humiliated if no one bought them, but if they landed in Shang Wen Rui's hand, it would be worse than death. The skinned person would not die immediately, but without the protection of skin, 
as long as anything came into contact with the wounds, it would cause heart-wrenching pain. This torture was a hundred times more miserable than death. At this moment, those girls were already frightened out of their wits. They even pleaded for someone to buy them away quickly as they were unwilling to land into Shangguan Rui's monstrous hands no matter what. However, who dared to snatch with Shangguan Rui? The buyers at the side had already retreated to a side quietly. Even if they witnessed everything, no one dared to utter a word. Shangguan Rui's eyes landed right on the remaining girls on the wooden stage. Chapter 684, Skin 3. I want these few too. What other fresh stocks do you have? Just bring them all up. Don't bring some unpresentable ones to fool me, or I'll remove your skin. Shangguan Rui scoffed coldly and looked at the slave master. His words threw those girls into utter despair. A chill ran down the slave master's spine as he said hurriedly, Yes, yes, yes. I'll go look for you right now. Then, the slave master immediately led a few people towards the other cages as the girls on the stage were kidnapped away by Shangguan Rui's followers. A girl looked directly at the wealthy businessman who wanted to buy her and pleaded, I beg you, please buy me, I'm willing to do anything, please, I beg you. However, that wealthy businessman did not dare to say anything at all, although he did fancy this girl's beauty. He did not dare to snatch with Shangguan Rui no matter how bold he was. He fled hurriedly under the girls please. While the wealthy businessman had his eye on the girl's appearance and wanted to buy her, he completely dropped that thought with Shangguan Rui here. Weighing his priorities between women and his life, the wealthy businessman obviously could distinguish which was more important. When the girl saw the wealthy businessman leaving the place, expressions of despair filled that girl's face and her body shook violently. More people gathered in the surrounding, wanting to watch the fun. In this black market, those with money and power were the bosses. No one could dream of overstepping this rule. This was especially so for Shangguan Rui, a regular in the black market. He had an extremely bad reputation in the monarch city and committed all sorts of crimes, yet he had extremely powerful forces behind him so no one dared to offend him at all. Although those slave masters found it a pity when their goods were destroyed like this, they did not dare to utter a word in front of Shangguan Rui. Why? Anyone wants to snatch with me? A cold glint flickered in Shangguan Rui's eyes as he glanced at the wealthy businessman in the surroundings. However, everyone whose Shangguan Rui's eyes swept across lowered their heads successively, not daring to speak. In this monarch city, they and even sect disciples usually did not dare to casually offend people of Shangguan Rui's level. Ha ha ha, young Sir Shangguan, you call the shots in this city, who would dare to snatch with you? That's right. Unless someone doesn't want his life anymore and dares to snatch these slaves with young Sir Shangguan. Many onlookers chimed in and laughed immediately. People in the black market were more or less clear of Shangguan Rui's style and no longer found it strange. Moreover, it was only a few slaves and the onlookers had never seen them as humans in the first place. Shangguan Rui was in a good mood after hearing what everyone said and nodded in satisfaction. He scoffed coldly, it can't be said that way. This black market has its rules. I'm someone who respects rules fully. If anyone wishes to bid, I am happy to compete fairly. However it's a little risky to compete with me. After hearing what Shangguan Rui meant, those wealthy businessmen who initially wanted to compete gritted their teeth and eventually did not dare to say anything. What a joke. Do you think you can dictate things here in the monarch city? At this moment, a young man in white scoffed and walked out from the crowd in great strides. Everyone was astounded and could not help but size up that young man. Rest assured, ladies, I am definitely taking care of this matter today. The young man shot a look at Shangguan Ru and then told the girls in the cage. Chapter 685, Skin, 4, Please, Young Sir, save us from here. I'm willing to be a slave for you a girl hurriedly spoke. However, before the young man said anything, the slave master took large steps forward and said, Brother, you aren't a citizen here, are you? So what if I'm not? The young man said, Ha ha the slave master shook his head and laughed, Brother, it's better if you don't stand up for them. This young Sir Shangguan Rui's father is the Dragon Tiger General of Nine Knights Dynasty. What? After hearing that, the young man was appalled, 
and he looked at the hideous Shangguan Ru in surprise. The Dragon Tiger General had the most influence in the Nine Knights dynasty. He had many armies under him and was a trusted subordinate of the current premier, Qin Long. Why, you want to snatch with me? Shangguan Rui looked at the young man with interest. After knowing of Shangguan Rui's identity, the young man broke out in a cold sweat, and he hurriedly said, Young Sir Shangguan, this, this is a misunderstanding. If it was anyone else, the young man would not have bothered and still dared to contend. However, he was facing the son of the Dragon Tiger General, and there was no way would he dare to offend him. Oh? Shangguan Rui looked at the young man with a teasing expression. You don't wish to compete with me anymore? Young Sir Shangguan, this is a misunderstanding. I've never thought of snatching with you. The young man immediately made clear his stance, deeply afraid that Shangguan Rui would continue to misunderstand him. Misunderstanding? Shangguan Rui scoffed coldly. How boring is that? As he spoke, he looked at the guard beside him and said emotionlessly, Where's the knife? The guard immediately took out a gleaming dagger without saying anything and handed it to Shangguan Rui. Shangguan Rui received the dagger and walked towards that young man with a harmless smile. The young man was a little nervous at the sight. Swoosh. In the next second, the dagger in Shangguan Rui's hand was stuck into the man's stomach instantly. Ah, in just a moment. Blood surged out and dyed the young man's white clothes crimson. The young man screamed in agony. His face turned white and large beads of sweat dripped down from his forehead. It was as though the unbearable pain wanted to consume him entirely. That fellow was really reckless and actually dared to provoke young Sir Shangguan. Tsitsi, an outsider did not know the situation and casually stood up for the slaves in the black market. He was really courting death. The onlookers scoffed coldly. In their eyes, Shangguan Rui's stab perfectly avoided the vital organs making it seem like he only wanted to torture this young man. Oh, I'm really sorry. I injured you by accident. This is a misunderstanding. You won't mind right? A sinister expression emerged on Shangguan Rui's hideous face. Ms. Misunderstanding. Young Sir Shangguan, spare my life. The young man withstood the pain and pleaded for mercy desperately. However, in the next second, the dagger in Shangguan Rui's hand stirred crazily in the young man's stomach. Ah, the young man died there and then almost instantly. Shangguan Rui then kneeled down to remove the dagger from the man's stomach and measured the young man's neck. Before everyone returned to their senses, the dagger waved, and he immediately slit the young man's neck. Large gushes of blood spouted out from the young man's neck and spattered all over Shangguan Rui's face. A cold glint twinkled in Shangguan Rui's eyes as he grabbed the young man's head and started to cut the neck area with the dagger. Chapter 686, Yu An Returning Stone, 1. In just a moment, the young man's head was entirely chopped off by Shangguan Rui. How ugly! Shangguan Rui lifted the young man's head in the air and inspected it clearly as though he was admiring a piece of art. However, Shangguan Rui did not seem to be very satisfied with this artwork and tossed it on the ground disinterestedly. Then, he lifted his right leg and stepped on the young man's head. The young man's head was crushed by Shangguan Rui, and red and white liquid spattered everywhere. The onlookers exchanged a few looks when they saw it. Shangguan Rui was really ruthless. Ah, after witnessing Shangguan Rui's brutality, the girls in the cage shrieked, Clean it. After cleaning the dirt off his shoes, Shangguan Rui looked at the slave master. Yes, 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 I'll clean it immediately. The slave master nodded repeatedly and ordered someone to clear the unbearable sight that was the young man's corpse. For outsiders like them, provoking the other party without knowing their identity was mostly courting death. Before long, the young man's corpse was cleared, and the remains on the ground were cleaned. Yi Kington had already walked to the wooden stage with the little white tiger. Her eyes darkened slightly as she watched the bloody scene. At that instant, the girls in the cages were filled with despair and trembled in fear. This one is not bad. I want it. Shangguan Rui regained interest and grinned at a girl with long, blue hair. Hey hey, young Sir Shangguan, you really have a good eye. This girl is a supreme grade slave. We caught her at the external frontiers of the sea outside Nine Knights dynasty. Very quickly, the blue haired girl was brought out from the cage by the slave master. Someone, someone save me expressions of despair filled the blue haired girl's face as she looked at the crowd helplessly. However, the place was silent, 
and people only looked at each other indifferently, no one would offend people like Shang Wenru over a slave, and the young man from before was a lesson learned. There were many beauties in the world, and there was no need to risk their lives to fight for one. I, I have a Yuan returning stone. Whoever can save me, I will gift him the Yuan returning stone. I'm begging you all, please. The girl knelt on the ground with tears streaming down her face. Yuan returning stone? The onlookers looked at each other. The Yuan returning stone was a rare stone that could refine weapons, but it was not a main material and could not increase a cultivator's skills. It was a type of energy stone that did not have many uses to a cultivator despite being extremely rare. Fook. Yuan returning stone? The little white tiger suddenly peeked its head out of Yi Qingtong's arms and scanned the surroundings. Soul returning stone. Where's it? Where's it? Many people near Yi Qingtong looked at the little white tiger immediately. An orange colored tiger cub appeared before everyone's eyes. Yi Qingtong shot a look at the little white tiger. She clearly told it not to come out for nothing. Spirit animal? Several cultivators were amazed as they looked at the little orange tiger in Yi Qingtong's arm. The supposed spirit animal was completely different different from a demonic beast, demonic beasts kill by nature and had a murderous air while spirit animals were humane, and some could even speak the human language, though such cases were extremely rare. However, while spirit animals were rare, it was not to the extent that its appearance could shock one. Chapter 687, Yuan Returning Stone, 2. In the Nine Knights Dynasty, the number of forces which possessed spirit animals was not a small number either. It was said that the falling sky valley in the Nine Knights dynasty had a big black dog that could speak, and it was also one of the few spirit animals that existed. Another example was the Uyang family clan, the number one family clan in the Nine Knights dynasty, which possessed a golden crow that could speak. Brother, is this little yellow dragon a spirit animal? Where did you get it from? Are you interested to make a deal? A rather skilled cultivator asked Yi Kington, I'm not selling, Yi Kington said. After hearing that, that cultivator saw that Yi Kington was foreign looking and did not seem to be someone from a big force from the Nine Knights dynasty. Little brother, I'm Zufu, a member of the Zu family clan in the Nine Knights dynasty. Are you sure you're unwilling to make this deal with me? Yi Kington heard something about the Zu family clan in her previous life as well. It was a second tier force in the Nine Knights dynasty and was about the same as Xu Anling sect and Wind Moon sect in the formidable Heavens dynasty. Fu Q. What do you treat me as? Am I someone you can buy just because you want to? The little white tiger glared at Zifu and shouted angrily. A trace of fury appeared on Zifu's face when he heard the spirit animal scolding him. I'm talking to your owner. Was it ever your turn to speak? Yi Kington looked at Zifu coldly. What my spirit animal said is what I want to say. What did you say? Zifu's eyes flickered. Yi Kington looked away from Zifu, ignoring his desires and spoke to her little white tiger. You're interested in the Yuan returning stone? Yes, the Yuan returning stone contains the heaven and earth energy. It is useless to human cultivators, but it's extremely useful to me. The little white tiger nodded repeatedly as its big, round eyes were filled with longing. Since you have a request, I'll help you to obtain it. Yi Qingtong smiled faintly. Her eyes were icy as she swept a look at the arrogant Shang Wen Rui discreetly. Then, Yi Qingtong walked towards the slave master in great strides. At that instant, Shang Wen Rui looked at the blue haired girl with interest. Truly a supreme great. How nice smelling. Shang Wen Rui lifted the girl's blue hair to near his nose and reveled in its smell. Quick, give me the knife. Faster Shang Wen Rui could not contain his excitement and said to that indifferent guard. Very quickly, the guard took a long knife out and handed it to Shang Wen Rui. I'm begging you, let me go as though she felt death approaching her. Fear was etched on the blue haired girl's face when she saw Shang Wen Rui walking towards her with a long knife in hand. The brutality and terror of Shang Wen Rui skinning someone alive earlier on were still vivid in her mind. Ha ha Shang Wen Rui laughed. Don't fail to appreciate my favor. Being able to be hung in my beauty pavilion is an honor of your many lifetimes. After saying that, the long knife in his hands moved, about to stab into the blue-haired girl's body. I want this woman. At that moment, 
Yi Kington's indifferent voice echoed around the place. Everyone was stunned to hear that and looked around the crowd instinctively. A beautiful young man in white slowly walked out with a feather fan in his hand. Another person courting death? Tsitsi. There are really quite a few people courting death today. When they saw that a beautiful young man wanted to snatch the blue-haired girl with Shang Wenru, everyone laughed coldly as they waited for a good show. Zafu scoffed. It seemed that he did not need to take any action anymore. Then, Shang Wenrui placed the long knife down and inspected Yi Kington with interest. Chapter 688, Yuan Returning Stone, 3. Brother, you aren't a citizen here, are you? The slave master could not help but have a headache when he saw another person here to court death. That's right. Yi Kington nodded her head. Ha ha, brother. Do you know that this is young Sir Shang Wenrui, the son of Nine Knights Dynasty's Dragon Tiger General the Slave Master said, What? Dragon Tiger General? Shock filled Yi Kington's face after hearing the Slave Master. Before everyone could mock Yi Kington after seeing her expression, she said disdainfully, So what? This blue-haired girl is destined to belong to me. Yi Kington walked up and stood in front of the blue-haired girl, ignoring everyone's gaze. She smiled and asked, do you really have the Yuan Returning Stone? I have have the Yuan Returning Stone. The blue-haired girl nodded repeatedly. Good. Since that's the case, you are mine. Yi Kington's lips curled up into a smile. The slave master waved a hand rather impatiently. This slave is already confirmed by young Sir Shang Wenrui. Confirmed by him? Yi Kington scoffed. This black market has its rules. That fellow has not paid so it does not count. Young Sir Shang Wen the slave master looked at Shang Wen Rui. Ha ha, the black market, of course, has its rules. A sinister smile played on Shang Wen Rui's lips. Let's see what his financial capability is then. After saying that, Yi Kington took out a yellow grade longsword from her space ring and threw it on the ground directly. Is this enough? A yellow grade weapon? Everyone at the scene exchanged a look. A yellow grade weapon was extremely precious. To ordinary sects, some elite disciples could not even obtain it after working hard for years. Seeing that the slave master remained silent, Yi Kington took out a bundle of weapons from her space ring and tossed it on the ground nonchalantly. Is this enough? There were ten weapons in that one bundle. Too many sect disciples died in the hell of a vice in a rachimistic realm. And Yi Kington picked up dozens of weapons on her way. Currently, yellow grade weapons were not very useful to her anymore. Eleven yellow grade weapons the slave master looked at Yi Kington in surprise. What was this fellow's background for him to be able to throw eleven yellow grade weapons out so casually? The onlookers were similarly astounded. Young Sir Shang Wen, look. The slave master was extremely tempted after seeing Yi Kington's eleven yellow grade weapons. Not mentioning one slave. Even 100 slaves were not worth these 11 yellow grade weapons. I'll give you one more. This slave is mine. Then, the corner of Yi Kington's lips curled up slightly as she retrieved the supreme yellow grade weapon from her space ring. Supreme grade? The slave master's heart palpitated wildly. A supreme yellow grade weapon. A weapon that could weigh against dozens of ordinary yellow grade weapon. Yi Kington also had quite a few weapons of similar grade in her space ring which were all obtained from the hell of a vice in a mystic realm. There was no reluctance in throwing a few swords out. Young Sir Shang Wen. How about the slave master looked at Shang Wenru and laughed. Ha ha, let her to him then, Shang Wenru said. The slave master thanked him repeatedly and hurriedly kept all the weapons that Yi Kington threw on the ground. Brother, she is yours. The slave master said to Yi Kington. Yi Kington nodded and was about to leave with the blue-haired girl. However, right at that instant, Shang Wenru suddenly blocked Yi Kington's way with a menacing smile on his face. Chapter 689, So what if I slap you, 1. Is there anything you need? Yi Kington glanced at Shang Wenru indifferently. Ha ha Shang Wenru laughed coldly as he sized up Yi Kington with an evil intention. We have gone through the black market's rules. Shouldn't we talk about my rules next? Your rules? Yi Kington arched a brow slightly. Tell me about it. A trace of insanity flashed across Shang Wenru's eyes and he turned to look at his guard. Where's the knife? The guard walked up quickly and, once again, handed Shang Wenrui the dagger which was used to chop the young man's head. My rules. 
Do you wish to know Shang Wen Rui received the dagger and narrowed his eyes at Yi Kington, his scarlet and foul tongue licked his dry lips. In the next second, a ferocious expression appeared on his face as he stabbed towards Yi Kington's stomach with the dagger. In everyone's eyes, this sight was, however, extremely normal. Everyone had already expected this outcome, an outsider who offended Shang Wen Rui was destined to have such an outcome, pow. A clear sound suddenly rang. That beautiful young man who held a folding fan actually held Shang Wen Rui's left hand that held the dagger was in, with the sharp tip of the dagger stopping just half a finger away from the beautiful young man's stomach. The onlookers in the surrounding gasped at Yi Qingtong's actions. This fellow actually dared to retaliate. An outsider actually counted young Sir Shangguan. Is he not afraid that his entire family would have to suffer the wrath of young Sir Shangguan? Fourth, what an ignorant fool. He would have been the only one who would die, but now that he counted, he has brought death to his entire clan. The young man from earlier was much more powerful than Shang Wen Rui, but he still did not dare to fight back until death, in fear that he would implicate his family. Shang Wen Rui's father was the Dragon Tiger General and the Premier Qin Long's trusted subordinate. Anyone who offended Shang Wen Rui would face a terrifying outcome, and this was something that everyone in the Monarch City knew. Many years ago, Someone could not see eye to eye with Shang Wen Rui's brutality and fought back, but in the end not only was that person put to death by dismembering the body, but his entire clan was also annihilated because of this. Shang Wen Rui did not think that Yi Kington would dare to retaliate as well and was taken aback. When he returned to his senses, he looked up slowly and stared right at the emotionless Yi Kington. Shang Wen Rui's lips curled up slightly and a berserk smile suddenly appeared on his hideous face. Good, really good. This is so interesting. Ha 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 ha. I want your clan to be completely annihilated. Completely annihilated. That savage laugh reverberated throughout the black market, and many onlookers shook their heads secretly. This beautiful young man might have implicated his entire clan already. Oh? Yi Kington looked at the enraged Shang Wen Rui indifferently without panicking. Without waiting for Shang Wen Rui to speak, she suddenly raised her right palm. In the next second, Yi Kington's right palm waved and flashed by before everyone's eyes like a bolt of lightning. Pow! A clear sound echoed in the scene. Silence. A deadly silence. Everyone was completely dumbstruck and their jaws hung wide open after this clear sound rang. Yi Kington's right hand had actually slapped Shang Wen Rui's ugly face. Chapter 690, So what if I slap you, too? Was this beautiful young man crazy? He actually slapped Shang Wen Rui. Still complete annihilation? A faint smile slowly appeared on Yi Kington's handsome face as she watched the dumbfounded Shang Wen Rui. Yu Shang Wen Rui was slightly stunned but the stinging pain on his cheeks reminded him of everything that happened a while ago. When he returned to his senses, he glared at Yi Kington furiously. Son of a bitch, how dare you hit me? I want you to die without a place to be buried. I want to chop off your head and dig out your eyes. Oh? Yi Kington looked at the enraged Shang Wen Rui with interest. Without waiting for Shang Wen Rui to continue cursing at her, Yi Kington suddenly raised her hand again, pow, before everyone's eyes, Yi Kington slapped Shang Wen Rui's cheeks heavily once again. Within seconds, a few handprints emerged on Shang Wen Rui's face. Never had Shang Wen Rui dreamed that he would suffer two consecutive slaps. He glared at Yi Kington with bloodshot eyes before shouting sternly to the indifferent guard behind him. Kill, kill him, kill this son of a bitch, noted. The indifferent guard nodded. In the next second, a martial chi level 3 first heaven aura emerged around the guard and completely enshrouded Yi Kington. Everyone was taken aback after sensing the indifferent guard's aura. Martial chi level 3, first heaven. This person's skills are actually so scary. He has already surpassed the elite disciples of super sects. Fourth, this person is Shang Wen Rui's martial teacher and is also his personal bodyguard. He is one of the Dragon Tiger General's trusted subordinates. That foreigner fellow will definitely die without a doubt. Everyone was extremely shocked after sensing the indifferent guards martial chi level 3 first heaven aura die. With a shout, a powerful martial aura immediately erupted out from that guard like a jet, and his palm rammed towards Yi Kington. However, when his palm was less than three inches away from Yi Kington, 
The little white tiger in Yi Kington's arm suddenly spouted out a trail of white flame. What? Sensing the force of destruction in this flame, the indifferent guard was alarmed. It was already too late for him to dodge. Ah! The indifferent guard let out a miserable cry as he burned into ashes after being hit by the white flame. Fu Q. You must be seeking death. How dare you think of attacking me? The little white tiger said furiously. Yi Kintang looked blankly at the little white tiger. He wanted to attack me just now Yi Kintang reminded the little white tiger. Oh, Fook. He didn't say it earlier. Whatever though. I said that I would be responsible for you. I will protect you. The little white tiger grinned at Yi Kington. After absorbing large amounts of evil aura in the hell of a vice in a mystic realm. The little white tiger's infant body currently had the combat power of a human at the second heaven of martial chi level 3, and it could easily kill a mere martial chi level 3 first heaven cultivator. Such a powerful spirit animal. It killed a martial chi level 3 first heaven in an instant. I was thinking why that fellow was so fearless, so it's because he has such a powerful spirit animal as his backing. Fourth, the ignorant are fearless. He dares to act like this just by relying on one spirit animal. The Dragon Tiger General should have already received news of this. We'll just watch how he dies later. In the crowd, Zifu's eyes twinkled as he stared at the little white tiger in Yi Kington's arms. If he could obtain that spirit animal, 